Hola amigos de Multimedia P, aquí estamos en el Festival Internacional de Cine de Guadalajara y me complace estar aquí al justo al lado de Geoffrey Reggio, que viene a Guadalajara a presentar su documental Visitors. Hello Mr. Reggio, I'm very glad to be here, here with you today. So, I will pass you the microphone, the microphone to respond the, the answers. So first of all, I will do ask you how Visitors born. What was the first main idea that you get in your mind to conceive this film? First of all, it's not what's in my mind. It's what's in my solar plexus. It's how I feel. These films that I make are not aimed at the mind. They're aimed at the heart. So I don't try to go out. They're not based in logic. So they're not based in screenplay where you know what it's going to be before it's produced. It's, it's more like uh, creating something in art. If you knew what it was going to be before you created it, you probably wouldn't do it. It's something that's inside of you that one must find. It's almost like being a midwife to something, giving birth to something that is already present and that through struggle and through focus and intensity one finds. So I don't start out with an idea. I start out with a feeling. and. The kinds of films I do um, look to the voice of the world. There's a beautiful statement called, uh, if I can remember it, um, uh, genius loci, which means the genius of the place. Every location has a voice of its own beyond anything that I can say. Mexico has a voice of its own beyond anything you can say because it, the place we live in is alive. The films I make are trying to find that voice of the world in a very limited way, of course, so that I can, on cinema, give that voice a place to articulate its meaning to those that watch it. Um, visitors is a journey as audio filmography, so I will ask you why um, do you think that someday maybe human beings will finish the journey of self-discovery? I can't answer that question. I can't, um, you know, I'm not God. Only she will know that answer, not me. Okay. But, um, You know, while we're here, we have the opportunity to journey beyond the time that we're in of the present or the past or the future. We can live in this, um, as it were, timeless zone if we're willing to live outside of ourselves and not think about ourselves. As I tried to say um, in presenting the film, All of us are on speed in rush hour, outrunning our future. These films are only trying to give us some, at least some feeling about that, letting us see that in a different way. Because uh, the films don't have spoken language. They have non-spoken narrative, however. Everyone will hear a different voice. And that's it. So it's more of a cinema that offers the freedom to the audience. When I make a film, I look at it in terms of three dynamics the image, the music, and the audience. It's a trilectic. It is the audience that is as much involved in the making of my films as myself and my crew, because we make the film in a way that leaves you free to have your own feeling about it. Uh, why do you use poetic cinema? Why do, you, why do you use poetic cinema and none other resources to explain and leave this message in the hearts of the audience? Well, it's a very beautiful question. I'll try to do my best to answer it. We see the world through languages. So as you speak Spanish, and I speak English, and other person speaks Lithuanian, or Russian, or Yanomami, or whatever it happens to be, our worlds are different because of the languages that we speak. Now, it is my opinion only that our languages, all of them, 
those of us that live in the civilized world, not the indigenous peoples like the Huichol or people like that, beautiful people, but those of us that are civilized, that live in Guadalajara or in New York City, our languages, in my opinion, no longer describe the world in which we live. Because I do documentaries, um, I, and I wanted to do a documentary that had a, another voice, a voice beyond our language, a visual voice. So it's not for lack of love of language that my films have no language in them. It's only because I feel that our language is not telling us the real story anymore. To me, this is an, an unspeakable tragedy. So what I try to do, you know, there's a famous uh, statement Napoleon made, a picture's worth a thousand words. I turn that on its head. I try to offer you a thousand pictures to give you the power of one word, to reclaim one's language in, 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 an, in speaking, in enunciating, we create that which we enunciate. So this is to help us choose our words well to describe the experiences we live in. I didn't want it to be logical, I wanted it to be poetic. In poetry does not respond to the question, what does it mean? Poetry responds to how does it feel? Did it move me? If you went to the mountain tonight with your, with your beautiful loved one and you said, uh, Ricardo, I wonder what the sunset means tonight. He would look at you and say, have you been taking a drug, darling? Is something wrong with you? In other words, what I'm trying to say is that um, some things can be very meaningful without having a specific meaning. Specific meaning comes through the language that we speak. It gives us the clarity of a subject and a predicate, verbs, uh, a syntax, a grammar, something to enunciate. This is who we are. However, um, if, if that's only one way to look at it. That gives meaning, but one can have a meaningful experience without words on a walk or looking into the eyes of another person or experiencing a beautiful piece of music. You would never ask, well, I wonder what Vivaldi meant by this. It's whether Vivaldi moved you in his music or not. So that's the difference. And last but not least, uh, to finish this interview, do you think one day men will manage to get back to the basics, uh, disconnect, people will be able to disconnect all the electronic, uh, electronic extensions? Well, I, th I think that's the answer to that question is not in my mouth, but in your mouth. I'm an old man now, and I'm getting ready to go through the revolving door to the other side, but you've just come in to this world. It's you that has to answer that question. It's your world. As I said before, nothing will change if you live in a rooted future, if you just accept the world the way it is and not question it the way, that what I mean by the world is the modern world of civilization. But if you're willing to leap off the cliff, the net will appear for you. You can create your own life. And to me, that is hopeful. Thank you very much, Jeffrey Reggio. It will be a pleasure to be here with you today. And do you want to add something or? No, I'm uh, very happy for your Thank you very much. And eso es todo por hoy, chicos. Este, los vemos pronto con más entrevistas para Multimedia UP. Estamos aquí en el Festival Internacional de Cine de Guadalajara.